smear layer removal efficacy of a novel endodontic irrigant. We all know that success of root canal therapy mainly depends upon the eradication of the microbes and prevention of the reinfection from the root canal system. Hence, a microbial seal is always a deal for an endodontist. Disinfection of the root canal system can be carried upon by several ways. It can be by normal instrumentation, either mechanical or rotary. It can be by using intracanal medicaments, by using uh, irrigating agents, by using lasers, uh, good root canal filling, good coronal restoration, and last is the systemic antibiotics. Root canal microbiota is mainly composed of more of a facultative anaerobes. And we all know that complete elimination of this microbiota from the root canal system is always mandatory before obturating a root canal system. However, complete disinfection of a root canal system is virtually impossible because of the complexity of the root canal system. Hence, the quest for the newer disinfecting agents still continues. Studies have been shown that when we do either mechanical or rotary instrumentation, around 30 to 35 percent of the root canal system is been untouched by mechanical instrumentation. Here it's mainly because of the complex root canal morphology. Here we can see how complex is the root canal system. And this is the SEM picture where it shows the root canal system which has been untouched by the instrumentation and you can see the biofilm of the microbes which are present. This is again one more picture of the microbial, uh, of a complex morphology of the root canal system where the tooth has been cleared and the image has been superimposed. Here we can see the complex uh, apical or coronal morphology where we can see a lot of apical deltas, ramifications, lateral accessory canals, etc. Hence the root canal morphology is very, very complex. Hence the irrigation plays a very important role in disinfection of the root canal system. Enterococcus fecalis, a lot has been researched on this uh, microbe. It is very commonly recovered from the failed root canal treatment. It has an ability to survive as a single organism without the help of other bacteria. It is highly resistant to alkaline stress. It can penetrate very deeply into the dentinal tubules where it cannot be eliminated completely. It can survive under extended periods of starvation and hence it makes a very, very difficult uh, condition to remove this microbe from the root canal system. Sodium hypochlorite, which is one of the gold standard and very, very commonly used root canal irrigant in endodontics. It is a very strong oxidizing agent. It is a clear straw color liquid. Usually it is commercially available in some, most of the countries as a Clorox. The advantages of sodium hypochlorite is being it is very good antibacterial agent. It is a very, very good tissue solvent and helps in removing smear layer when, along when it is used along with a chelating agent. However, it has got some of the disadvantages, like an unpleasant taste or smell when we use on the patient. It has got a high tissue toxic, so you should be very careful while using it so that it doesn't go beyond the apex. It corrodes the instruments if it comes in contact for a longer duration. Some of the patients have shown to be allergic to this hypochlorite, and also when we combine this with chlorhexidine, it forms a toxic product called as a parachloroaniline. Chlorhexidine, another commonly used root canal irrigant, very widely used. It has also got a very good bactericidal action. It is effective against gram-positive as well as gram-negative bacteria, fungi, uh, viruses as well as dermocytes. It has got a dual mechanism of action that is in a lower concentration, it is a bacteriostatic, whereas in a higher concentration, it is known to be a bactericidal. Advantages, as I said before, it is a very good antibacterial as well as an antifungal. It has got a very good property of substantivity where it can be released for a longer duration of time once it has been irrigated inside the root canal system. Tissue toxicity is comparatively low compared to sodium hypochlorite and it is increases the resin dentin bond stability if you are going to use uh, any resin inside the root canal system. However, it has got some of the disadvantages like it has got a very low tissue, pulp tissue dissolving ability. The action of the chlorhexidine is reduced in presence of organic matrix of the root canal dentin. It does not remove the smear layer as effectively as the other chelating agents, and also it forms a, a, a PCA, that is a parachloroaniline, a toxic product when it combines with the sodium hypochlorite. Mechanical instrumentation, either rotary or manual instrumentation, when we do, there is something called as an amorphous smear layer which is formed. Smear layer is mainly composed of the inorganic debris, odontoblastic process, pulp tissue, microbes, and their metabolic products. Removal of smear layer has been a long debate over this topic of whether to remove the smear layer or no. But now the literature supports that removal of the smear layer is mandatory in root canal therapy before we do a three-dimensional obturation. 
because this smear layer, it acts as a substrate for the bacteria. It inhibits the penetration of the intracanal medicaments and irrigant inside the dentinal tubules. It acts as a barrier between the root filling as well as the root canal wall. And also it inhibits the penetration of the root canal sealer inside the dentinal tubules. If you see the endodontic literature, <coughs> a long way of agents have been used, right, from uh, tetracycline, lactic acid, EGTA, MTAD, etc., etc., malic acid, phosphoric acid, a lot of things have been used. However, the combination of EDTA and sodium hypochlorite is still a very commonly used combination for removal of a smear layer. Hybinex, it is a newer uh, intracanal medicament, as well as we can call as an irrigant also, which has been come into the market now. It has been used as a supplemental rinse and debriding agent, which helps in cleansing of the dental plaque and the infectious surface of the oral cavity. It's mainly composed of monosulfoated and bisulfoated hydroxybenzone sulfonic acid, mono and bisulfonated hydroxymethoxybenzone benzene sulfonic acid, sulfuric acid, water, and it's got a colorant. Manufacturers of this Hybinex, they claim that it is quite effective against the plaque biofilm when it has been tested in periodontics. However, till date, there are no studies which have evaluated the effectiveness of this Hybinex against the root canal biofilm and also its efficiency in removal of the smear layer. Hence, the aim of this present research study was to evaluate its antibacterial efficacy against the biofilm of the Enterococcus fecalis as well as its efficiency to remove the smear layer when it is used as a root canal irrigant in the instrumented root canal system. Coming on to the methodology, ethical clearance was obtained from our university. The evaluation of the antimicrobial efficacy of this Hybinex, it was done on the 42 human single rooted teeth which were devoid of any caries or cracks and where the roots were completely formed and mature. The teeth was cleansed with 2.5% hypochlorite and it was disinfected using 0.2% sodium azide. Decoronation of the tooth was done at the cemento enamel junction so that we could standardize the root length to 17 millimeters. Root canals were prepared to size F3 using a pro taper files. Irrigation was done using again 2.5% hypochlorite between each instrument change. And the final irrigant to remove the smear layer, we used 17% uh, EDTA for a minute. Grooves were prepared on the mesial and distal sides of the each tooth, and uh, each tooth, each root half were coated with the nail varnish. Samples were then sterilized using uh, ethylene oxide. Then the root apices were closed with silicone rubber and the root was placed in putty impression material to mimic a closed end system of root canal irrigation. Preparation of the inoculum, that is the subcultures of the standard strain of E. fecalis was used. Two to three isolates of these colonies were incubated at 37 degrees centigrade for three to four hours in three ml of uh, blood agar. Then five microliter of this inoculum was placed inside the root canal and incubated at 35 degrees centigrade for three weeks for the formation of the biofilm. Two samples were randomly picked up and they were subjected to SCM analysis in order to see for the biofilm formation. The samples were longitudinally split, dehydrated, mounted on the metallic stub, gold sputtered, and we observed it under the SCM to confirm that the biofilm is formed. Then the treated samples the, were treated were completely randomly divided into four groups of 10 each according to the irrigation regime. In the group one, were treated with sodium hypochlorite for five minutes, five, mil, five ml of hypochlorite. In group two, five ml of chlorexidine was used. In group three, five ml of hybinex. And a group four served as a control where we used a phosphate buffer saline. Irrigation procedure was performed using a 28 gauge needle under the aseptic condition. The final irrigation performed was with the distilled water and in order to uh, eliminate the residual activity of these chemicals, we used thiosulfate and twin 80 as an antidote for the sodium hypochlorite and chlorexidine. Samples were dried and longitudinally split into a straight chisel. The dentinal shavings from each half were collected using a round burr up to a depth, depth of 0.5 millimeter. Then these dentin shavings were transferred into one microliter of blood heart infusion agar in an append of tube, and it was incubated at 37 degrees centigrade for six hours. Samples were then serially diluted and plated onto the triplicates on the BHI agar plates. Then we counted, after incubation for 12 hours, these plates, the colony forming units were counted. In order to evaluate the efficacy of this hybinex for the smear layer removal, we used 30 extracted human single anterior root, anterior teeth. Soft tissues were removed from the teeth and it was disinfected by using 0.2% sodium aside. Uh, again, the teeth were decoronated at cemento enamel junction and the root lens was standardized to 16 millimeter. 
working length was determined and the root canals were enlarged using protaper file up to F3. Samples were then randomly divided into three groups. In the group one, samples were irrigated with 17% EDTA for a minute. In group two, samples were irrigated with 5 ml of Hibinex for a minute. In group three, we irrigated the canals for saline, which, controlled, which served as a control. Irrigation procedure here also was performed using a 28 gauge needle, where the needle was kept one to two mm short of the working length. Longitudinally, grooves were prepared on the buckle and lingual surfaces of each root. Then the samples were split longitudinally and they were subjected to SCM analysis. Photographs <coughs> of these uh, root canal surfaces were taken at the coronal, middle, as well as the apical third. Areas where these areas were evaluated by two independent evaluators who were blind for the study. Scoring criteria was again uh, commonly used criteria by Torobin Ajet. We used score one, two, and three, where one stands for no smear layer, two for moderate, and three for heavy smear layer. Statistical analysis for antimicrobial activity, we used uh, Kruskal Wallis test for a group comparison and Man With Me U test were used for intergroup comparison. For smear layer analysis, the examiner's inter examiner's reliability was tested using a Kappen, a Kappa Cohen's test, and the data was scored by using data scores were analyzed by using a Pearson chi square test. The significant level was kept to 0.05. Coming on to the results, the Assessment of the antimicrobial activity of the Hibinex, the two samples which were randomly selected were observed under SCM, and here we can you can see there was a dense formation of the biofilm of the E. fecalis once the root canals were incubated for three, 21 days. This is the graph which shows the antimicrobial action of the test irrigants, where we can see the distilled water which served as a control showed the highest, uh, least antibacterial action, where the colony forming units were maximum. Among the test irrigants, there was no significant difference between the chlorhexidine, hibinex, as well as the sodium hypochlorite. All the three irrigants performed similarly. Coming on to the smear layer removal efficiency, here we could see the Kappa score test of inter-examiner's reliability. They were all same, so there was no significant dif difference in the coronal, middle, and apical third. Coming on to the smear layer scores, we could see that EDTA, <coughs> there was no significant difference between EDTA and hibinex in the coronal and middle third, whereas in the apical third, EDTA performs slightly better compared to Hibinex. Even though the smear layer were removed by Hibinex, they were not as good as EDTA, whereas in uh, coronal and middle third, both serve the same. And the saline, as well known, it does not remove any smear layer, and there was a heavily smeared layer found on the root canal surface of all the samples treated with saline. These are the SCM picks of uh, smear layer removal by EDTA. This is a coronal, this is a middle, and this is a apical. You can see where the dentinal tubules are quite devoid of the smear layer in the coronal and middle and the apical third. However, in the hibinex, again, in the coronal and middle third, we could see a very good clean root canal surface where the dentinal tubules were very nicely open, devoid of smear layer. However, in the apical third, there were some pluggings of the root canal dentinal orifices with the smear layer compared to EDTA. However, it do remove, but not as great as EDTA. This is a saline in the coronal middle apical third. We can see it is a densely smeared surface. Coming on to the discussion, endodontic infections are usually polymicrobial in nature. It is not a single microbe which affects the root canal system. And intracanal microbiota, it exists both as a planktonic as well as a biofilm form. Biofilm, a lot of research has been still going on on this biofilm. It is nothing but a structured community of the bacterial cells enclosed in a self-produced polymeric matrix, which is adherent to an inert living surface. Why we use biofilm in this study and not the uh, planktonic uh, variety of uh, cells? Because biofilm structure protects the residing bacteria from the environment threats. It has shown to form capable of producing a polysaccharides, which again protects the microorganisms from the antibacterial agents. The structure of a biofilm permits trapping of the nutrients and metabolic activity. The bacterial cells within the biofilm may communicate with each other, and there will be a genetic transfer of the characteristic, which is commonly known as quorum sensing. Bacteria present in the biofilm is known to be 100 to 1,000 times more resistant than its planktonic counterpart. So because of all these reasons, a biofilm is known to uh, protect the bacteria from the external threats, and that is why we have used the biofilm model so that it, it mimics the clinical scenario. 
The antibacterial activity of the hybinus box in this study showed it was equivalent to sodium hypochlorite and fluoroxidin. This is mainly can be attributed because of a peculiar mechanism, a different mechanism of action of hybinex, which is called as a contact desiccation process. This contact desiccation process of hybinus is mainly because of the presence of the concentrated liquid sulfates and sulfonates, which is present. The attraction between the water's positive hydrogen pole and the sulfate negative oxygen surface, surface that enables the sulfate molecule to imbibe water and act as a desiccant. When the hybinex comes in contact with the bacteria, it uh, rapidly absorbs the water from the bacteria, which leads to the denaturation and coagulation of the bacteria. Water from the biofilm is completely sucked, and the, ultimately the biofilm and the bacteria, it collapses and contracts the biofilm. So the main advantage of hybinex compared to other uh, commonly used antimicrobial agents in endodontics is there is a very remote chance of uh, microorganism being resistant to this hybinex. This is mainly because of its mechanism of action, which is mainly based on the physical change to the microenvironment. The second advantage is the water sulfate attraction. That is, it effectively dehydrates only the and uh, precipitates only the pathogenic bacteria and not the normal tissue cells, or the, not the normal bacteria. Chlorexidine and hypochlorite, as proven by previous various studies, showed a similar antibacterial action against the Enterococcus fecalis. On coming on to the smear layer removal, Hybinex showed equivalent action as compared to EDTA. It can be mainly attributed because of the sulfuric acid which is present in the uh, Hybinex, which causes the demineralizing effect. However, in the apical third, Hybinex was not as great as EDTA. This can be attributed because of the sclerosis of the dentin, which is present in the apical third of the root canal system. Saline, as shown by previous study, does not have any uh, smear layer removal efficacy, which has been proven in the present study also. We selected one minute time interval for this irrigation because it has been shown that in a previous study, more than one minute use of EDTA causes the periradicular uh, and intertubular and peritubular dentinal erosion, which ultimately weakens the tooth. That is why one minute of irrigation was used. So to conclude, <coughs> Hybinex demonstrated a very effective antimicrobial efficacy in reducing the Enterococcus fecalis from the root canal system. It also had a good smear layer removal effic efficacy from the root canal system when compared to EDTA. Therefore, Hybinex can be a promising irrigant agent in the failed root canals or infected root canal system. These are my references. I'd like to thank my research companions with whom I always work, Professor Craig Bromgartner from US, as well as Dr. Anil Kishan from Toronto, who has helped me in conducting this study. Thank you.